Hey guys, today we're going to be taking a look at the mounted generals in Ebony. Now, I've done a lot of testing on this. Well, a little bit of testing, mostly just adding and multiplying numbers. And this video took a very long time to make. So I'm going to be doing a little introduction explaining what we're going to go over today. And you're going to want to watch this because it's going to have all the timestamps where you can skip to the parts that you want to watch. And you don't have to watch the parts that you don't because it's probably going to be a pretty long video. Now, if you do want to skip through and just look what you want, it's fine. I got no problem with that. I just ask that open another tab and let this video run in the background so I can get that watch time. I'm about halfway to monetization and uh, I need watch time and about 500 more subs to get there. So if y'all could help me out with that, I would appreciate it. If you see an ad on this video or any of my other videos, that money's all going to YouTube. And honestly, I don't like YouTube taking all the money. I want a piece of that pie. So if you could help me out with that, I'd appreciate it. Now, in this video, first thing we're going to talk about is the conclusions. And that's going to be this timestamp. After we talk about the conclusions, we are going to be going over the general stats, and that's the main generals, and that's going to be at this timestamp. Then we're going to go over the assistant stats, and that is going to be at this timestamp. Then we're going to talk about the total effective damage. And that's probably going to be the part that most people are interested in, seeing how effective these numbers are in an actual scenario, and that is going to be at this timestamp. After that, we are going to take a look at the combinations and what's going to be the best combinations of those two types because it's not just as simple as picking the best in both categories because there's conflictions with that and the numbers don't just add up that way. And that is going to be at this timestamp. And then once we're done with that, we're going to do an outro and that will be at this timestamp. Now, I appreciate y'all watching the video. If you find it useful at the end of it, Maybe leave me a like, and uh, let's uh, get right into it. Okay, now let's talk about the conclusions of this video. For the conclusions, uh, Roland is the best free-to-play general. Looking at the stats, looking at all the numbers, the way they work together, compatibility issues and stuff, Roland is his higher effective damage than Hannibal isn't even close. It's not even really a debate. Roland is just better. And that's coming from someone that uh, had always said that Hannibal was the better choice for a long time. So it pains me to say it, but Roland is the clear winner in this category. Now, conclusions for the premium generals. Andre Massena, Gaius Octavius, Napoleon, Loudon, Prince Eugene, Polygenus. Those are the only six premium generals that I would recommend. Lysander, if you want that rally size, but his damage really falls off. The rest of them fall below Roland in terms of effective damage, and I wouldn't recommend any of them. Overall, five stars, uh, full ascension specialties. Andre Messina is number one, Gaius Octavius number two, Napoleon number three. If you count in their skins and their covenants, Napoleon is number one, Andre is number two, Gaius Octavius is number three. If Gaius gets a Covenant in the future, or a skin that gives him some decent buffs, he might become number one, but for right now, Napoleon is number one. But only if you can get the Covenant. Especially the Covenant, because that's 5% March size. Now, let's talk Best Assistants. Best Assistant, hands down, and it's not even close, Andre Messina. He is going to be the best assistant, and that's due to his 18% march size that he gets as an assistant. And he can use a march size book. That is insane. So he is number one assistant easily. It's, it's not even a contest. But if you don't have Andre, and you don't want to wait to get him, uh, another solid choice for an assistant, Zalyan. Zalyan is a pretty decent assistant. Barbarossa is surprisingly a pretty decent assistant as well. That's due to his 16% march size. But you're missing out on uh, some attack, defense, and HP stuff that you could get from someone like Zhao Yun or Andre. So I'd try not to use Barbarossa. Really try to get Andre. He's going to be the best. Custer is also a solid assistant. But the thing to remember with Custer is he has a lot of compatibility issues with some of the best generals. 
You can't pair him with Roland either. So I don't really think he has a lot of utility as an assistant just due to the compatibility issues overall. Napoleon Prime as an assistant. Napoleon Prime as an assistant is pretty mid. However, once you get his covenant fully done, you get that 5% march size, that extra 20% attack, he becomes one of the best assistants. But only if you can do the covenant. If you can't do the covenant, he's not a good assistant. But once you get the covenant, he becomes a good assistant. Now, first we are looking at the overall stats for the generals. Down here I have the stats for the mounted generals. If you want to pause and look at these, we're not going to be talking about these today. That's going to be a separate video entirely. We're just going to be talking about the PvP generals. And let's start with looking at the tavern generals. First up we have Roland, who right off the bat we're just going to say he's the best free general that you can get. And let's compare him to Hannibal. You can see Roland has 277, 295 for Hannibal, 0% march size, 16% march size, 239, 196, 219, and 252. So pretty comparable on the defensive side of things. Hannibal has a little bit extra attack, but no march size. And when we jump to the effective damage part of it, we're going to see that Roland really outpaces Hannibal in a big way. So that's going to make Roland our clear winner for the mounted uh, free general category. Next we have Custer. Uh, pretty decent stats overall. He has some utilization if you want to go with him, but he just doesn't hold up to Roland. Pretty much that's going to be the case with all of these tavern generals, tavern and relic generals, is that they're just not going to hold up to Roland in terms of effective damage. Lina Mosa. Everybody knows Lina Mosa, that's your hit point general. 309, I believe that is the highest health that we have. Yes. No. On the health side of things, we also have the defensive stat, and his defensive stat is pretty low. Now, right now I'm trying to work out how the relationship between defense and hit points work, and a formula that we can use to calculate uh, how that impacts the survivability for them. I've got some video, some uh, formulas that I'm working with right now, and I'm trying to figure that out, but I just need more time to get it done. So for now, we're just saying he has the highest health, his defense is a little bit low, so maybe there might be somebody that actually has better practical hit point and defense, but for now I'm not going to say for sure. His attack overall, not horrible, but he can't take the skill attack book, so that sets him back. And he has a lot of compatibility issues with a bunch of generals. March size of 6% overall, not that great, but it's better than 0 like we have on Martinus. Martinus, pretty high damage overall, 323 really low defense, health, decent-ish, and zero march size. So Martinus is pretty high damage. He can also get a skin, but I believe it only gives him like an extra 10% damage. And I calculate his total damage later so you can see how that effective that is. But Martinus not taking the attack book sets him back. And I don't think Martinus is really a good choice because even though he is a tavern general, he doesn't really pop up in there a lot, and you're going to have a hard time farming him. Next we have Barbarossa. Pretty low stats around the board. 249, that's eh. 215, eh. 236, eh. But 16% march size is pretty nice. So Barbarossa, although I used to consider him to be trash, after doing all the calculations and numbers, he's actually not as bad as I thought if you put in the work to get him fully maxed out. But where Barbarossa really is better is in the assistant slot. So I definitely wouldn't recommend using him as your main general. But as an assistant, he might be viable. Yuffie, 250 attack, 188 defense, 205 hit point. Pretty low stats all around. 20% march size is pretty nice. That's a good uh, amount, and it's going to help him out a lot. But it's not. once we get to the uh, effective damages and look at that, it's not going to be able to help him get into the top four or five generals. He's just not going to have the attack to get there. Next we have Hannibal, which we already talked about him. 
just uh, just not as good as Roland. That's pretty much all there is to say. Robert Gisgard, Washington, Li Jing. Yeah, these guys are... I don't think anyone seriously considers using any of them as a mounted general. I just run the stats out of curiosity to see if I can find something that's interesting. And not really pretty much exactly what we expected to see. Li Jing has pretty high overall damage, which is nice, but zero march size. And, uh, yeah, that really sets him back. He also can't take the attack book, so not really worth it. Let's also look at some of these uh, little tricks that we have over here. Roland has a negative 20% attack for archers, so that's that's pretty nice. Uh, Lee Nimosa has a negative 10% hit point against all troop types, so that's that's there. Yuffie, 20 attack on mounted. Uh, yeah, I guess I guess that's useful in some cases. 15% defense on Robert Gisgard. Not, I mean, it's not going to change anything about him. And that is what we have for the tavern slash free generals. Selection's pretty wide, but the only choice you should be making with them is Roland. Now we're going to talk about the premiums. Now Napoleon Prime, as you can see, 355% attack. Once we get him up to, uh, if we get a skin on him and we get his covenant fully done, that's going to give us an extra 30% attack and an extra 5% march size, which is really going to be a night and day difference on him. And that's going to put him clearly as the highest damage uh, attacker in the game. Like, nobody is even close. 334 on Andre Masena, but yeah, that's just nowhere near. Anyway. He also has a uh, ranged in siege, negative 15% attack, so that's pretty good. Defense stat is really high, 300, 236 health, that's pretty nice. Overall, he is possibly the best mount in general, but we'll get to that later. Next we have Zhao Yun, 309 attack, 229, 217, kind of average uh, health across the board. 6% march size, not super huge, kind of stunts his growth a little bit. He could be a lot better if he had like 12% or 20% in there, but that 6% just really sets him back. Mordred, 0% march size, decent attack, average health and defense, not really a lot to talk about. There's just better choices, but we'll see his effective damage later. Polygenis, 321 attack, 270 defense, and 247 uh, health. So pretty high defense, decent health. And the attack is really nice. 10% march size means he's a pretty solid choice across the board. And we'll see that in his effective attack. Basil II. Hands down the worst mounted general in terms of damage. And I'd say also probably defense and health because these are both sub 200. Don't go just off of these numbers because you have to look at the march size as well. See like Washington here has a 246 attack, but he has the 10% march size. And when we look at the effective damage, we're going to see that that actually makes his effective damage higher than Basil II. Basil II is the worst mounted general in Evany. And that's just a fact. Next we have Maximilian. 266 attack, 254 defense, and 200 uh, HP. Pretty average stats across the board. 14%. March size is pretty nice. He has a lot of debuffs. Range negative 30% attack and 30% defense. Siege mount on the ground negative 10% attack. So the debuffs might make him better. His effective damage doesn't come out to uh, super top, but he's a probably pretty solid choice. Gaius Octavius, one of the top three for effective damage. 20% march size. That's going to be the highest you can get out of all these generals, matched only by Yufi. But we can see a 296% attack is pretty high. 198 defense, it's pretty low. 231 health, it's about average. So Gaius Octavius is a pretty solid choice. Not the best choice, but he's solid. He can't take the mounted attack book, so that sets him back, unfortunately. And he does have some compatibility issues with some of the higher hitting generals, so that's unfortunate. But not a bad choice overall. Bertrand Du, however you say that. 267 attack, 211. 
Defense, 232 health, 14% march size. Not bad overall. Solid choice. Prince Eugene, 281 attack, 215, 221, and 18. Solid choice overall stats. Lysander, 286, 14. Average defense and HP. But he has a 15% rally capacity. So if you're doing a lot of rallies, that might be something to keep in mind. That is not bad, and he's not a terrible choice. Loudon, 310, 14% march size. Pretty decent uh, on defense. Health is about average, so I'd say not a bad choice. Andre Masana, he's going to be our number two for effective damage. High attack stat overall, 334, 195 health, and then 297 for defense. So pretty high defense. Really good attack at an 18% march size, which is really nice. Next, we have Sunsei, 294, 249, 179. Really low for the health department and only a 6% march size. That means he's going to be suffering in the total effective damage. That's going to stunt his growth, but not a terrible choice. Okay, now we are going to talk about the assistant stats. Now, as we know for assistance, the only things that really matter is going to be your skill, the base skill, no red stars, your specialty, and covenants if you have any. This uh, sheet right here doesn't include covenants, but they're in the calculations and the effective damage part of it, so don't worry about that. We'll get to that. For now, we're just looking at the skill and the specialty. Going over all the free generals, Roland, 85 and 6. Custer, 110. Linamosa, 60 and 0. Martinus, 126 and 0. Barbarossa, 61 and 16. Yuffie, 66 and 6. Hannibal, 101 and 0. Robert Gisgard, 155 and 6. Washington, 81 and 0. Li Jing, 105 and 0. Napoleon Prime. Now we're moving on to the premium generals. 130 and 0. Note on Napoleon Prime. His Covenant's going to give him 5% march size and 20% attack. And his skin is going to give him 10% attack. So that's really going to bump him up as an assistant. With no, neither of those, he's not a great assistant. It's not it's not great, not horrible, but he's kind of mid of the road. Once you throw in that extra 5% attack and that extra 30% damage, if you have those things, he becomes a pretty viable assistant. He's pretty good. He's one of the best but you really need those things for him to be viable. Next we have Zalyan, 105 and 6. Not a bad choice, he's one of the higher damage assistants. Mordred, 110 and 0. That 0 really sets Mordred back in the assistant slot. Not a great choice as an assistant. Polygenus, 116 and 0. Again, the 0 just really sets him back. Basil II, he is the worst main mounted general and he's also the worst assistant general. 56 total attack, pretty much non-existent defense in HP, and 0% march size. Do not recommend this guy. Maximilian, 76 and 0. Gaius Octavius, 96 and 6. Not horrible, not great, but it's it's there. Bertrand do however you say that, 80 and 0. Health and defense, not horrible, 30 and 40. Uh, Prince Eugene, 90 and 6. Lysander, 85 and 0. However, he does have some rally capacity on his base skill. I believe it's 10%. So if you're doing rallies, he might have some use there. But overall, not really great. Loudon, 105 and 0. The 0 is going to set him back, not great. Andre Massena, 18% and 120. With a 55% defense and a 20% HP, he is the choice as an assistant. Hands down the best. Sun C, 95 and 6. Not great, not horrible. It's just kind of there. Now, let's look and see who we would want if we are trying to get a beefy march. Like I said, this uh, isn't factual. I don't have the numbers to run on that. But let's just take a general look at it and kind of see some outliers. We have Lina Mosa, 95% HP. That's pretty high. Uh, Mordred, 50 and 30. Not terrible. Napoleon Prime, 80 and 40. 
Lysander, 60 and, I mean, excuse me, Loudon, 60 and 50. And those are about the only ones that are worth mentioning for the defensive side of things. If you want a more defensive march, I'd probably recommend go with one of those guys to uh, help you out with that. And just real quick, let's look at the assistants. So if you want to look at these guys, compare their stats, pause the video and look at that. But we're going to be talking about that later. Okay. Now we are going to talk about the effective damage. This could be the part of the video that's the most relevant to most people. So let's go over to these numbers. What do they mean and how did I get these numbers? Now, this column right here is going to be your generals, obviously. The ones highlighted in yellow, those are going to be the free generals. Or the ones that you can get from the tavern, from relics, stuff like that. This column right here is a K35 rally spot, 2000% buff, 1.85 march size. We are using this as the base, and then we are calculating the damage for this. And then we are adding the general to that march to calculate how much damage that general is going to add to that march. So if we throw Andre onto this march, we're going to see we're going to get 51.4 extra billion damage. And guess that is B with a billion. These numbers really get insane once you start multiplying them with percentages and stuff. This column, K40 rally, rally spot, 2500% buff, 3.05 million march size. This column right here is going to be the same as this one, but the calculation is done with the skin for the general if they have one, and a covenant if they have one, which in this case we only have three. Now, these columns, these ones are done with just five red stars, specialty, no books or anything, and that's pretty much it. And this is for them in the, the main general slot, so the most effective damage you're going to get out of it. Now, a note on the march size and attack. And the reason I hesitated for a little bit on announcing that this is effective attack is because you have to keep in mind that as you're taking damage, your effective attack is going to go down. So that plays into the relationship between the march size and the attack. But after doing some math and uh, thinking about it for a while, you are going to lose less damage per hit point if you have more march size than if you have more attack. And the reasoning is this. Let's say you have 100 hit points on a mounted troop. Once you lose those 100 hit points, you are going to lose that troop. If you have attack buffs on them, you're going to lose those attack buffs for that troop. If you have march size buff, you're not going to lose the march size buff because you still have more troops. You're only losing the attack that you like didn't buff if that makes sense so you're going to see a lower loss of attack over time if you have more march size so keep that in mind as we look at these numbers because if you're going to be in a situation where you're going to be taking a lot of damage throwing on some generals that have more march size means you're going to lose that attack over time slower which is a good thing now that doesn't take into account health, defense, or any of that. That's going to really dictate how much attack loss over time you have. But like I said earlier in the video, I don't have the formulas to calculate the loss over time for that. I'm working on that. Let's look at the highest damage we can get for a K35 and who's going to give us the most return. Napoleon and Andre and Gaius Octavius, all pretty close. 51 and 47. A difference of 4 billion damage when you're talking about a difference between the range of 50 billion and 30 billion it's not a huge difference any three of these guys are going to give you pretty good return but if you're interested in on min maxing andre is going to be the best in this situation uh notes we got roland as the best free to play with 43 damage billion 41.8 for Yuffie, so Yuffie might be a solid choice for a free-to-play player. But we can see that later on, even later on, it's still really close. So Yuffie, pretty solid choice as a mounted general. Zalyon and Custer, neck and neck. 
The reason for this is even though Zalyun has overall higher damage, Custer has that 10% march size. So Custer wouldn't be a terrible choice either if you just wanted to go for him for some reason. Maximilian, Sun C, Mordred, base of the second. Yeah, they're down here with the free generals, so they're not really good choices. We got Martinus down here, 39.9. We can see that march size is really hurting him a lot, even though he does that super high damage. Barbarossa really surprised me. I was expecting him to be down at the bottom, because I've always told players that Barbarossa is trash, because if you just look at his stats and don't think about the march size aspect, he's trash. But after looking at this, I mean, he's not great, but he's not trash. He's more like some loose litter on the ground. So yeah, I wouldn't use him. I wouldn't use anyone that's free except for Roland. And uh, let's see, we got Hannibal down here, 36.4 versus 43.1 billion against Roland. I, I think this is pretty conclusively seals debate. Roland is better than Hannibal. He just, it's just better. There's really no choice, reason to choose anyone other than Roland, unless you already have Custer or Yuffie well on the way, but Roland. Now let's look at the K40 stats. Now as we go with the K40 stats, general rule of thumb, the higher your overall buffs are for attack, the more important your march size is going to be and the rate of return that you have on that. And we're going to see that. 98.7 billion for Andre. 92.1 billion for Gaius, and 91.4 billion for Napoleon. Now we really see Andre starting to pull out here, and that's because he has an 18% march size buff, which is pretty high. It's the second highest, except for Gaius, Octavius, and Yuffie. Yuffie and Roland, we can see 81 and 82 still hanging in there pretty good. Pretty much not much changes across the board over here. Basil II, still in last place. Barbarossa, uh, he climbs a little bit. The higher march size is going to help him out in higher level keeps. So, something to keep an eye on. Custer, not a horrible choice for free players either. Zhao Yun, that 6% march size is really hurting him right now. 78.3 billion. Not, not bad by any means. He's a good general, but not stacking up to 98 billion. Now, let's see what happens when we add a skin and a covenant to these guys. That's going to push Napoleon to 103.4 billion, bringing him to the highest effective damage possible out of all of these mounted generals. Andre Masana doesn't have a skin, but he has covenant. It's a pretty bad covenant. It only gives him 10% attack, which is what I calculated. He has some others for rallies, but I didn't calculate in any of the rally buffs. If you're interested in that, you can do that yourself. And I'll have the calculators and stuff for y'all to actually, if you want to, you can plug in your own your own rally spot numbers to it, march size and buffs, and you can calculate exactly how much these guys are going to give your personal march, because it will change depending on what level you are. But it's not going to change a whole lot. But yeah. Uh, Martin is down here. His skin gives him a teeny bit extra. I still wouldn't recommend him. Not a great choice as a general. And that's about all we have for uh, the main general. Overall, Andre, Gaius, Napoleon, and Roland. Those are going to be the four that you want to choose. Now let's take a look at the assistants. Now, with the assistants, these are the numbers that uh, I calculated out. Now, same... Marches as before, K35 and K40 with set buffs. This column right here is adding the numbers for an attack book, if they have an attack book available. And this number in parentheses is the number that is the attack book plus a march size book. Because, and that, the reason for that is that you'll see I also included in this category Genghis Khan. But the thing with Genghis Khan is everyone else in this list can take a March size book. Genghis Khan can't take a March size book. So his 31% March size that you get from fully maxing out his specialties, 
isn't really an accurate representation of how that's going to be because he misses out on that March size book. And the way this math works, you can't just subtract 12 from his 31% March size and say, yeah, this is effectively how he's going to do compared to the other generals because the math doesn't math that way. You have to calculate how everyone else would do with a 12% March size book. So it's a lot of math, but we can uh, we can compare him with his overall attack with an attack book versus how some of these other people are going to do once they get their March size book. Now, let's look at the K35. Andre Masana, 24.1 billion. Second place, Genghis Khan. Huge shocker, but that 31% March size is really high. I don't recommend his, him as an assistant simply because he misses out on that March size book. If they changed it, give him the March size book, I'd say definitely Genghis Khan is going to be a great assistant, but that's going to set him back. Custer, 17.5. Custer has a pretty solid assistant number, but Custer has a lot of compatibility issues. He's not going to work with any of the top three generals. He's not going to work with Andre, not going to work with Gaius, and not going to work with Napoleon. So, unless you're using him as the main, and he's pretty mid as a main, he doesn't have a lot of use as an assistant, because he doesn't work with Roland either, if I remember correctly. So, not a great choice as an assistant, simply because of his compatibility issues. Zhao Yun, uh, 16 billion, not great, not terrible. 16 billion on Napoleon, not great, not terrible. But in the later calculations, I do add the covenant for that, so we can look at that in a minute. Barbarossa, surprising as an assistant, but the reason Barbarossa is here is he still gets that 16% march size as an assistant, and he can also take a march size book, so that makes him not a horrible choice as an assistant, surprisingly. The rest of these guys, I eh, wouldn't even really bother with them. Basically, second down at the bottom again. Definitely the worst mounted general in the game. So yeah, for a K-35, Andre is the best assistant by a long shot. Like, it's not even close. 7 billion damage over Genghis Khan. Let's look at a K-40. Once again, we can see Andre is still dominating. An extra 9 billion damage over Genghis Khan. 34 billion for Custer. Sorry, my headset died right in the middle there. But as I was saying, we can see that Genghis Khan is pulling ahead of Custer due to that extra march size. Barbarossa, 31 billion. Uh, not a horrible choice as an assistant. Zhao Yun, 30 billion. Not a horrible choice. Napoleon, 29.9. Not, not a horrible choice. The rest of these guys, not a great choice. I would definitely wouldn't rec really, been, really recommend them. Let's see what happens when we throw on the attack books for those that are compatible. Andre is not compatible with an attack book. And these numbers here are going to be for a K40. So he's going to stay the same here. Custer's going to jump up to 40 billion. That's not going to bring him close to Andre. Barbarossa not even going to come close. Zalyan still not going to come close. And the rest of these guys still not even close. Now the interesting part, once we throw on an attack book and a march size book, Oh yeah, Genghis Khan can take the attack book, so that bumps him up to 44.4 billion, which is really close to Andre. Now, once we throw a March size book with Andre, 61 billion. Completely, complete game changer, that extra March size book. 53 billion for Custer. That's going to put him, that's going to put him way above Genghis Khan, which is why I don't recommend Genghis Khan as an assistant. We can see that extra March size book really is a game changer. Barbarossa, 51 billion damage. Zalyan, 50.3 billion damage. Barbarossa is probably the best free to play choice as an assistant, but he still doesn't stack up to Andre. If you can get Andre, which you only need one copy of him, so it's not an impossible task for a free to play player. Definitely get Andre. He's hands down the best assistant. Barbarossa, probably going to be second because he has a lot of uh, 
compatibility that we can use on him. He doesn't have a lot of compatibility issues. And that extra march size really bumps him up. Genghis Khan. Wouldn't recommend him, to be honest. We can see that he fall, but falls behind Zalyon once we throw on the extra books. And Barbarossa and Custer. Custer compatibility issues, so I don't really recommend him. Now let's see what happens when we throw on a Covenant. Once we throw the Covenant into the mix for assistance, that really makes Napoleon viable as an assistant. That brings him up to 46 billion, down from 35 billion. So if you're not going to get the Covenant on Napoleon, I don't think he's a good assistant. But if you want to put in the work, get that Covenant fully, he is a viable assistant. And we'll see that in the the, uh, the total total numbers over here in a minute. Covenant gives uh, Andre a little bit extra, 50 billion. So interesting to look at, but main thing to take away, Covenant makes Napoleon viable as an assistant. And the reason for that is because that Covenant gives him a 5% march size, which is really what you're looking for. That 20% attack is nice, but the 5% march size is what's really putting in the work here. Now, Let's go over some of these combinations to get an idea of who is going to be the highest damage overall. Now the way this number is calculated is putting it into the calculator with these numbers for these guys added together. It doesn't work like, uh, let's say we're going to look at this and we're going to say, oh, we're going to throw Andre because he's the highest 98 million with Genghis Khan as an assistant 38. That'll give us about 140 billion. That's not how those numbers work. The attack and the march size interact with each other, so you have to calculate the totals for them. It's not additive, it's multiple kick, multi, multi. Multiplicative. Multiplicative. The numbers are multiplicative, so that's why it's done over here. Let's sort this by damage so we can see who the best combination is. And these guys here, these numbers are going to be Covenant, Skillbook, uh, Skin, Whole Kit, Bang, and Kudul. Literally everything. The highest overall damage march that you can get is going to be Napoleon Prime full max out with an Andre Massena. This is applied to the K40 march and that's going to give you 172.7 billion extra damage. That is an insane amount of damage. Second place would be Andre with Napoleon as an assistant and we can see that once you get Napoleon fully maxed out the numbers don't lie He's not a bad assistant. He's a pretty good assistant. Probably number two. 161.4 billion. If you have Gaius Octavius as a main, Andre's going to be the best assistant. 160.7 billion damage. Fourth and fifth are still going to be Napoleon, Barbarossa, and Zalyana's assistants. Pretty close right here, but Barbarossa just barely beats out Zalyana thanks to that extra march size. Next we got Andre with Zalyan, Napoleon with Genghis Khan, surprisingly. But like I said, the higher the overall bus, the more the more use you're gonna get out of that march size. So combining Napoleon, who has super high attack buffs but low sort march size, with Genghis Khan is gonna give you a lot of march size, is not a terrible strategy. It's gonna be 154.2 billion damage. Next we have Andre with Barbarossa, Gaius Octavius with Barbarossa. Andre with Khan, Gaius with Zhao, Gaius with Khan, and Gaius with Napoleon. So we can see that it really depends on who the main general is when choosing who to put with them as an assistant. So we can see that for Gaius, Octavius, and Napoleon is going to be probably the worst assistant out of these options. But what we're talking about with Andre, Napoleon is the best assistant we can have for him. So it's important to understand how these relationships work between them. And if we're talking free to play, I didn't run the numbers on this, but we know that we're going to choose Roland as our best 
overall. And you can see that Andre is by far the best assistant we can have for him. And the second best is going to be Barbarossa. Third place, Zhao Yun, probably. Napoleon would probably also be a good choice for uh, Roland, but only if you have that covenant. That 5% march size is going to be really important. Any of the guys on this list are honestly going to be pretty decent assistants. Except for Genghis Khan, he's going to be a little bit lacking, because just because he doesn't have any buffs, it's just purely mounted march. But I would highly recommend Andre for the assistant. Napoleon, if you have him, and you can do a covenant. And if you don't have either of those, Zalion isn't a terrible choice, or Barbarossa. And that is pretty much all that I have for the total effective damage. If you want to download this, I'm going to link it below so you can download it. And we have the calculators here. And I'm not going to go super in-depth into how these calculators work. I'm probably going to do a different video on that. But all you need to know is, for your purposes, this calculator up here is irrelevant. You don't need it. This is the one down here. This box is going to be your base rally spot. This is going to be the amount of troops that you get on top of that. So just a base rally spot in K40 is 550,000. And then I added 2.5 million as the buffed percentage. And then you put the percentage buffs in here as a decimal. And that's the same for the attack stat as well. 7540 is the base attack stat for a K15 mounted troop. And then this is the buffed percent. Now, you can Google, and I'll link a website below where you can get the base stats for these troops. The way you're going to figure out what the buff percent is, is you're going to have to look in-game and see what your total is. And you have to do some math to figure out what the buff is versus the base. You'll take whatever your troop training center says the total buff is, the total attack is, and subtract the... Uh, base from it and that'll give you your buffed percent and that's for your own now the way you're going to put decimals in here say we have a 10 percent march size so you got the number 10 for 10 you move the decimal two to the left so that's 0.10 rounded down to 0.1 if we have a 350 percent attack it's going to be 350 decimal two to the left 3.5 and this calculator is going to tell you your increased attack. So if we have 350% march size and a 350, 350% attack buff and 10% march size, that's an extra 92.7 billion damage. And that's where these numbers come from. So if you want to use that calculator, that's a quick and dirty on how to use it. All right. That was an absolute behemoth to compile and talk through. If you found this information useful, I'd appreciate leave a like. Maybe subscribe if you feel like it. Next video is probably going to be the mounted stats for uh, monsters. We're going to be going over those. I gave you all a little sneak peek of that in this video. So if you want to see that, consider subscribing. And I will catch you all in the next one.